good, good morning, everyone. So I'm going to um, describe a little bit of the work that we are doing at the University of Pittsburgh in adding some dynamic load balancing features into a pre-existing MPI uh, computational fluid dynamics uh, uh, application. So uh, this is a joint work with my colleague Patrick Kishinery, who has a background on mechanical engineering. And uh, he wrote the original uh, TFD application that we are uh, working on. OK, so uh, a little bit about uh, the, the uh, university where uh, I come from. So the University of Pittsburgh is a public university in the west of uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, it has uh, a good record of uh, um, uh, having some interest in, in high performance computing. The Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center uh, is one of the original NSF uh, uh, HPC centers in the country. Um, and it's a joint venture between the university and CMU and, and Westinghouse. Um, there's some work in the computer science department on different aspects of HPC. And there's a growing community in, on campus about uh, running si uh, scientific simulations and using HPC. Uh, what you see here on the, on the background is the uh, Cathedral of Learning, the main building of the, uh, of the, uh, of the university. It's uh, the tallest academic building in the U.S. And uh, it's, this is actually a, a kind of a misleading picture. Uh, Pittsburgh is a very cloudy city, the top three most cloudy <laughs> city. This is a rare view of the cathedral. But anyways, it's a beautiful building. Uh, I was saying there's a growing community of people uh, on campus working on, on, on simulations. And uh, in 2008, uh, the university created the Center for Simulation of Modeling. We call it SAM. Um, currently, it employs a uh, few people, among them five of us, five uh, HPC researchers, consultants. Uh, our mission is uh, threefold. We try to educate people, uh, do our own research, and, uh, and also we maintain the software stack of our own uh, supercomputer, which is called Frank. It is, it's a relatively small supercomputer. It has uh, 8,000 cores, uh, but it's very, very uh, busy. Last year, it had 91% uh, utilization. And I guess the, the rest was just downtime of, of, some, of the, uh, some of the nodes. Uh, Frank is named after uh, a professor in the, of the university, uh, Henry Frank. But it's also a good name because it's, it's, a, it's a Frankenstein cluster. It's uh, because of the investor model that we have it's completely heterogeneous. Uh, the largest partition probably has 500 uh, uh, cores, which are uh, homogeneous. Uh, nevertheless, we have uh, around 500, uh, more than 500 active users uh, that come from different field sciences, uh, uh, the healthcare, uh, uh, medicine, and public health uh, schools, and uh, engineering. And one of the start, start uh, users of the cluster is a professor in uh, mechanical engineering. And he developed an application that uh, tries to model uh, uh, turbulent uh, reactive flows. And, and Martin uh, actually uh, described the, uh, some of the methods. So if you want to model these type of uh, uh, flows, you can directly solve the uh, equations, the, the Navier, Navier stock uh, equations uh, using a DNS, or you can model some of the uh, uh, small time scale uh, factors, and uh, 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 that's uh, and, uh, that's known uh, as Martin explained as, as uh, LES, or you can use uh, another method uh, that actually models the rest of the equations. The point is that as you go and add more models uh, to the equations, you lose some 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 accuracy in the uh, in the simulations. So um, the IPLM CFD application actually uses a particular technique called a filter density function to implement LES. LES is uh, a very popular method that uh, actually uh, it's tractable and at the same time it retains a lot of uh, accu uh, accuracy in the, uh, in the simulation. So this application was written to model the, uh, these uh, type of flows and a salient feature is that it has uh, a loading balance. Uh, you can see on the left uh, a picture of a, um, one flame. And uh, if this is just a 2D projection. But the point is, if you 
see each, each uh, uh, if you divide this into a mesh and analyze each cell, you will get a, a profile of uh, the compu uh, computing time that requires uh, um, to solve each cell. So you can see in this scale that some portions of the space requires, you know, twice as much time as other portions. Now, if you, you know, use a, 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 a uniform decomposition of the space, you will end up with this kind of profile. This is a 100 rank um, um, execution, and this is the wall time, uh, the average wall time for, for uh, um, some number of uh, iterations. The point is that you see all these uh, uh, ranks that actually are uh, completely overloaded. So uh, load, balance, uh, load imbalance is a big uh, problem for, for this application. And uh, um, CFD was designed to solve this load uh, uh, imbalance um, kind of with a primitive uh, uh, approach. Uh, it uses METIS. That's not a primitive part. The point, the, the primitive uh, uh, approach is that it requires to split execution. So we run the application, you know, checkpoint the state, and we have to relaunch the application to, to balance or rebalance the, the load. Okay, so our uh, task was to actually add dynamic load uh, balancing uh, features into IPMCFD. And this is a work in progress. So I'm going to talk about what uh, we have done so far and uh, we need, uh, we need to, to, uh, to do for, to finish this, this, this project. Um, I gotta mention one thing. So traditionally, uh, AMR, adaptive mesh refinement, is, was you know, the reason uh, to have load imbalance in CFD applications. Uh, but in the case of the application we're working on, is actually a chemical reaction. So in the regions where there is more rea uh, a reaction, uh, uh, in the simulation, the time that you require to solve those regions is, you know, much higher than, than the regions where you don't see that much reaction. So chemical reaction is the reason. Uh, IPLM CFD doesn't use uh, AMR yet, so, but still has a, 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 a very dramatic load imbalance. So there are some approaches, and we talked to other people at Sandia. So Jackie Chan, is, is she's the director of the uh, uh, National Combustion Center uh, in Sandia. She uses uh, Legion, which is a, a, a task-based uh, uh, runtime system and language out of uh, Stanford um, to deal with the load imbalance problem. And we are considering, we are using two uh, tools in actually comparing the two of them, uh, Zoltan, uh, and I will explain, you know, uh, a little bit of, about uh, Zoltan, and Charm Pascal. Um, so uh, the agenda for the rest of my presentation is I'm, I'm going to describe a little bit uh, the uh, application we're working uh, on. And then I will mention the features of Zoltan. And uh, I'll describe a, a, a ver very uh, simple benchmark that we are using. And then I'll, I'll offer a, a comparison between Zoltan and Charm Plus Plus. OK, so when um, in the title, I had the word hybrid, and I, uh, I want to explain that a hybrid doesn't mean that we are using a hybrid architecture. A hybrid means uh, that the application uses a combination of, of two numerical methods. Um, so to simulate uh, uh, the, uh, the, the flows, this application uses a combination of uh, a, finite, uh, a finite difference method and some Monte Carlo particles. So um, what you see on the right on the right part of the of the slide is um, what we call an ensemble. So basically, each uh, square here, each cube, this represents one um, finite difference point. So we have a mesh over the, the whole simulation space, and you know the uh, uh, the volume contained within these uh, uh, empty points actually contains uh, some particles, and those particles. Uh, uh, are just just a uh, Monte Carlo method, and that's what that's why we call it a uh, hybrid. So hybrid means. Callback functions every time you uh, you need to serialize an object, or you need to call the load balancer, um, and 
basically in the uh, Zoltan IPL and CFD, CFD version, uh, every cell is the atomic unit. So what happens is that a rank may have like an irregular portion, an irregular portion of the of the domain. So th those uh, those are irregular subdomains. Um, there's a you have to register your data with Zoltan. So you have to uh, you know tell Zoltan what's the number of objects and what's the weight of these objects. And by the way, you have to manually compute the weight of the object. So weights here represents the the the, the, uh, the uh, Computation time, uh, and also you have to provide the Sultan with the uh, graph uh, of of the different uh, objects. In this case, uh, are the cells. So you have to um, um, build this graph and uh, tell Sultan, you know, what cells this particular cell communicates with, and you can optionally provide some edge weights. Um, you have to write the pack unpack. Uh, functions in Zoltan, and uh, you can choose uh, from a uh, range of different uh, load balancing algorithms, which are, you know, uh, partition, uh, repartition, and refinement um, from the, uh, from the uh, set of algorithms that Zoltan has. Uh, and there is something very useful in Zoltan, which is called the distributed data directory. This is basically the uh, location manager for us. So it's a, a directory where you can query for each object where is the rank that, uh, that it has that, that a particular object. So in term++, plus plus, uh, the effort was a little bit easier because um, the, um, the, uh, our atomic unit was not a cell, was a subdomain, and we could keep those subdomains regular. So that uh, simplified the communication uh, uh, algorithm quite a bit. Um, and we define a containing class for the subdomain that uh, is actually a, a, a three-dimensional array, char array. Um, we al also had to migrate some stuff to a char group because there were a bunch of functionality that uh, uh, was, was process-based. Um, the communication was all, all over the place and that was uh, kind of a headache. So we had to push most of the communication at the level of the of the char array, uh, but we are using a structured dagger uh, that uh, uh, simplifies the, the the control control flow of the application, and we had to obviously write the pop the pop methods. So um, okay, so I'm going to skip. Uh, so we are using a, a very uh, simple benchmark to compare the two. I'm going to skip this description. Uh, so just a benchmark in that you know, models the reaction of, of some, uh, of, you know, air and, and, and a fuel uh, in a very controlled environment so we could really uh, validate the, uh, the execution. Um, and uh, let me just show this. Uh, uh, here's Zoltan and here's Chern++. Plus plus. Uh, we scaled this to 256 uh, uh, cores and we contrast the ideal execution with, you know, the uh, uh, static a partition and the dynamic partition. Uh, so as you can see, Chern++ plus plus, it does a little bit better than Zoltan, but it, you know, still the uh, the the comparison is is really a uh, is really a uh, uh, it's really similar. So uh, Chern++ plus plus improves 18 percent uh, performance, Zoltan 12 12 percent for this particular case. So we feel that the uh, performance-wise, the competition is is very close between the two. Uh, but here's the difference. So when you, when it comes to the programming effort, if you use Zoltan, this is the number of, of uh, the lines of code that you need to, you know, code the startup, uh, manage all the uh, build the uh, the graph of, of objects and all the uh, information that you need there. Uh, these are the pop methods in Chern++. Plus plus, that's really easy. Uh, in Zoltan, it's more involved. Uh, uh, how to serialize the different objects. Um, even when you call the load balancer, you have to set some parameters, pass the, uh, the, the graph information. Uh, and that's when um, plus plus uh, features come, come in uh, very, uh, very handy. Um, and uh, okay, so that's where we are. Uh, we are, uh, we still need to, f to finish porting uh, um, part, of the, uh, part of the code. And uh, here's my wish list for Chern++. Plus plus. I wish uh, 
we had something like a MPI, Chunk of Plus Migration Guide. I know it sounds silly, but uh, sometimes, you know, uh, using build systems with Chunk Plus Plus is not exactly trivial. So, um, you know, some, some sort of a guidelines would be uh, really, uh, really helpful. Um, also, you know, translating c common MPI programming patterns into Chunk Plus Plus uh, would be uh, would be would be useful, uh, and, and dealing with uh, some communication operations and uh, and also you know in my mind I imagine this uh, guide to have some uh, highlights on what opportunities you can uh, use uh, what opportunities you can uh, exploit with with Trump plus plus um, and also parallel I/O documentation it's it's a requirement for CLD applications uh, because. They usually make a visualization of, of the uh, execution, so uh, it's necessary to have parallel I/O and also, you know, a good uh, documentation for uh, using uh, accelerators. Uh, that concludes my talk. Um, so uh, we feel that uh, Zoltan and Champ Plus uh, um, um, are both uh, good approaches in terms of performance, but uh, definitely Champ Plus Plus alleviates the uh, programming efforts by offering. Uh, um, an API that is easier, easier to use. And I'm ready to take uh, some, do we, do we have time? For, okay. <laughs> No, no, not really. So the experiments that we have were, were run on Stampede, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I guess, Part of the uh, what we want to do is to really port this onto Frank, and really you know have the load the load balancer deal with the uh, heterogeneity of the uh, of the architecture. Yes, very very important question. So that's that's part of the challenge. So we have to remove every single MPI operation. Uh, we are not. Um, Using the interoperability of MPI and and Trump plus plus, and that was a challenge because sometimes, you know, in MPI it is just a different model, right? So it's more asynchronous, uh, more more like a synchronous model. Uh, so in in some cases we had to split some methods because there was uh, an, an MPI operation uh, deep in the class hierarchy, for instance, or you know, or in the middle of, of something. So yeah, it was it was a challenge, but it, yeah, it's possible, I guess. Thank you. Uh,